the nightly business report good evening tonight the colombo port city special economic zone is quickly emerging as a premier business hub in south asia sri lankan airlines has successfully regained its safety rating achieving a perfect score of 7 out of 7 stars after a comprehensive review the colombo stock exchange continues its positive momentum on the fourth trading day for the week and Coca-Cola is targeting the upper range of its organic sales projections for this year driven by increased demand for its sodas and juices in the United States. From Studio 24, here's Vinuth Wanasuriya. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. The Colombo Port City Special Economic Zone is rapidly establishing itself as a leading regional business hub in South Asia, offering a modern legal framework and a business enabling environment designed for investors to thrive. Positioned as a competitive alternative to established financial centers like Dubai and Singapore, Colombo Port City is attracting international businesses and revitalizing Sri Lanka's economic landscape. Its strategic location and modern infrastructure create an ideal platform for growth and development, establishing Sri Lanka as a key player in the region. Historically, international and Sri Lankan IT and BPO firms have favored hubs such as Dubai. by and Singapore due to their favorable conditions including the ability to pay employees in USD attractive tax incentives political stability and robust economies Colombo port city has recognized these needs and has developed a regulatory framework along with strategic incentives that replicate these advantages as a result Colombo port city has emerged as a compelling option for global businesses seeking to expand in South Asia while also serving as a homegrown solution for Sri Lankan enterprises aiming to broaden their regional and global presence. The Asian Development Bank has agreed to provide Sri Lanka 30 million US dollar grant from its general capital resources to improve the country's renewable energy capacity. The latest funding initiative focuses primarily on completing the Moragalla hydroelectric project while also supporting complementary renewable energy initiatives. President Anur Kumar Desanayake serving as the Minister of Power and Energy has received cabinet approval to allocate the funds directly to Ceylon Electricity Board in two installments. Located in the Ulapane area of the Kandy district, the Moragolla hydroelectric project is the final hydroelectric development on the Mahaveli River basin. Initiated in 2014, it has been funded by the Asian Development Bank under its Green Power Development and Energy Efficiency Improvement Investment Program for the CEB. The project features the construction of a 37 meter high concrete gravity dam with a five gate spillway creating a 38.5 hectare reservoir with a total storage capacity of 1.98 million cubic meters and a full supply level of 548 meters above sea level. Designed to function as a peaking station, the hydroelectric plant will have an installed capacity of 30 megawatts, projected to generate approximately 85 gigawatt hours of electricity annually. The government announced efforts to accelerate the development of the Eastern Container Terminal at the Port of Colombo, which is a highly anticipated initiative managed by the Sri Lankan Ports Authority. This week, Transport, Highways, Ports and Civil Aviation Minister Vijitha Herath received cabinet approval to designate the construction of the Eastern Container Terminal as a special project. This designation aims to streamline the development process by minimizing bureaucratic delays and expediting the necessary permits and approvals required by the Sri Lanka Ports Authority. Initiated in March 2023, the ECT is projected to become the largest container operations terminal at the port of Colombo with plans to complete construction by the end of 2024. Spanning an area of 75 hectares, the terminal will feature a 1320-meter long jetty designed to accommodate 3 mega vessels simultaneously. To enhance operational efficiency, it will also be equipped with 12 ship to shore cranes and 40 rail mounted gantry cranes, facilitating seamless movement between ships and the land. 
The SLPA has allocated a total of 585 million US dollars for the terminal's development, with China Engineering and Excess Engineering appointed as the contractors for the project. Sri Lanka Tourism is excited to announce a warm invitation to travellers worldwide, encouraging them to explore the breathtaking beauty and rich culture of Sri Lanka during the upcoming tourist season. All tourists are invited to enjoy a safe and secure experience while discovering the stunning beauty of Sri Lanka. The island nation is committed to maintaining the highest levels of safety and security for visitors throughout their stay. In a reassuring statement, the Defence Ministry has confirmed that comprehensive measures have been implemented to ensure the safety of tourists in every region of the country. This commitment not only guarantees peace of mind for those currently enjoying all that Sri Lanka has to offer, but also reassures future travellers planning their visits. Sri Lanka Tourism is dedicated to providing every traveller with a memorable and enjoyable experience, showcasing the island's rich culture, breathtaking landscapes and warm hospitality. As the upcoming tourist season approaches, the nation eagerly awaits the opportunity to welcome guests from around the world. Hamid Ashraf has been appointed as the director of the Sri Lankan Export Development Board by the President Anura Kumar Disanayake. With 35 years of experience in the manufacturing and marketing of narrow fabrics, Ashraf is the managing director of Fantasia Elastics, where he has excelled in top-level management and established strong supply chain partnerships with the industry. An avid traveller, Ashraf has participated in global fairs, exhibitions and forums, attending all ITMA fairs from 1994 to 2015. He has also contributed to the development of Sri Lanka's industrial landscape, having previously served on the board of Industrial Technology Institute, the country's premier scientific research and development organization, appointed by the Ministry of Science and Technology. From November 2015 to May 2019, he held the position of Director at Bank of Ceylon Property Development and Management Limited. Ashraf played a pivotal role in founding the Fabric and Accessory Manufacturers Association in 2003, serving as secretary for over a decade and significantly impacting the industry. Well, let's go for a short commercial break. Stock market updates coming right after this. Stay tuned. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. On the full trading day of the week, the Colombo Stock Exchange has recorded a positive trend. The All Share Price Index recorded gains, while the S&P SL20 Index contributed to its upward momentum for the fourth consecutive day. Well, to get a summary of today's trading activities, we now turn to Gamidu Patiragi, who is joining us from Capital Alliance Securities. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a positive note. The market ended at 12,473.5 points, marking a 116.05 point increase from the previous session, with a turnover of 6.8 billion rupees. The SL20 index, however, experienced an upward movement from of 68.7 points to end the day at 3,732 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors, with high turnover and crossings recorded on Haley's PLC, Sampath Bank, and John Gill's Holdings. The top five gainers for the day were SMB Leasing Non Voting, Blue Diamond Jewelry, Industrial Asphalt, Ceylon Printers, and UB Finance. The top five losers for the day were Tesla Agro PLC, Columbia Investment Trust, Mylan Developments, Kahawatha Plantations, and Nation Trust Bank Non Voting. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's treasury bill yields were flat across maturities at yesterday's auction, with all offered 125 billion rupees of bills sold. To get its insights and the possible impact on the secondary market, we now connect with Anjali Matthews joining us from First Capital Holdings. The secondary market commenced the week with active selling interest on the back of low volumes as the yield curve slightly edged up towards, and towards midweek the market experienced further interest on selling as profit taking emerged amidst low volumes ahead of the T-bill auction which was held on the 23rd of October 2024. So towards the latter part of the week, the yield curve remained broadly unchanged, signalling a mixed sentiment with foreign buying visible on the short tenors, mainly on the 2026 maturities. 
Notably, the yield curve inclined across the board between 5 basis points and 20 basis points during the week, pivoting from the declined rates during the past weeks. And meanwhile, the, in the primary market, stability was noted across the board during yesterday's T-bill auction. The total offered T-bill amount of Rs 125 billion was fully accepted, with 53% being accepted from the three-month T-bill, and the weighted average yields of the three-month, six-month, and one-year T-bills remain stable at 9.32%, 9.65%, and 9.95% respectively. And meanwhile, in the forex market, the rupee broadly remained unchanged against the US dollar, recording at rupees 293.3, compared to rupees 293 recorded at the beginning of the week as at 16th October 2024. Gold prices have edged higher today, buoyed by safe human demand, as investors seek stability among market uncertainties. Meanwhile, palladium has surged to its highest level in over a month, driven by concerns surrounding potential sanctions on Russian supplies following a recent media report. Sport gold increased by 0.7%, reaching $2,735.26 per ounce, just shy of the record high of $2,758.37 an ounce set yesterday. The rise in gold prices can be attributed to a combination of factors, including jitters surrounding the upcoming US election and escalating tensions in the Middle East, both of which have heightened demand for gold as a secure investment. In addition, US gold futures mirror this upward trend, also gaining 0.7% to reach $2,747.90. As geopolitical uncertainties persist, the precious metals market remains closely watched by investors looking to hedge against potential risks. Meanwhile, oil prices rose sharply in Asian trade today after Israel harshened its rhetoric against Iran, while focus turned to upcoming business activity data from several major economies due to in the coming days. Brent oil futures expiring in December rose 1% to $75.72 a barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude futures rose 1.1% to $71.57 a barrel, and crude prices were nursing two weeks of steep losses amid heightened concerns over slowing demand. While they made some positive moves this week, overall gains were still limited. Prices also fell yesterday after US inventory data showed a bigger than expected build in crude stockpiles. Traders were positioning for an escalation in the Middle East tensions after Israeli Defense Minister told Air Force crews that the world would understand Israel's strength after striking Iran. The Sri Lankan rupee has recorded a slight depreciation against the US dollar in commercial banks today in comparison to yesterday. According to Commercial Bank, both the buying and selling rates of the US dollar have risen, indicating ongoing fluctuations in the currency market. Well, now let's look at how the rupee performed in other global currencies. short break now, corporate world coming right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Sri Lankan Airlines has successfully restored its safety rating to a perfect 7 out of 7 stars following a thorough review of recent cockpit incident. The airline's swift and transparent response to the situation has reaffirmed its commitment to maintaining the highest safety standards, ensuring the confidence of its passengers and stakeholders. Sri Lankan Airlines' proactive approach in addressing the incident was pivotal in regaining its safety rating. In a statement, the airline highlighted that this event was isolated within its 45-year history, emphasizing its long-standing track record of safety and reliability. The leadership of Sri Lanka 
American Airlines reiterated that the safety of both passengers and crew is their top priority, assuring that any deviations from established standards will be met with stringent consequences. With this reinstatement, Sri Lankan Airlines aims to reinforce trust among its passengers and continue its dedication to exceptional service and safety in the aviation industry. The airline remains committed to ongoing improvements and training to uphold its esteemed reputation. Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation is delighted to announce the appointment of Mr. Nusit Kumar Thunga as its new chairman, effective from the 22nd of October this year. A seasoned professional with extensive experience in finance, management and entrepreneurship, Mr. Kumar Thunga brings invaluable knowledge to Sri Lanka's largest and most established insurance provider. Mr. Kumar Thunga is a fellow member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka, having achieved his membership in 1997. He is also a member of the Institute of Certified Management Accountants of Sri Lanka and additionally he holds a BSc Special Degree in Estate Management and Valuation from the University of Sri Jayavardhanapura. Beyond his professional qualifications, Mr. Kumar Thunga has played an active role in advising the taxation on economic policies in the country, further demonstrating his commitment to the country's financial landscape. His leadership is expected to guide SLIC towards continued success and innovation in the insurance sector. Hilton Sri Lanka has once again demonstrated its leadership in premium hospitality, taking home an impressive 12 awards across four properties at the prestigious World Luxury Hotel Awards held in Indonesia. The accolades serve as a testament to the brand's commitment to excellence, world-class service and innovative guest experiences. Among the standout winners, Hilton Colombo was honoured as a luxury business hotel, luxury conference and event hotel and also secured recognition for best architectural design. Hilton Colombo residences located just minutes away from the flagship hotel also added to the accolades with titles such as Luxury Family Hotel, Luxury Residences and Luxury City Hotel. The property is renowned for providing comfort and sophistication, particularly for families and long-stay travellers. In southern Sri Lanka, Double Tree by Hilton Viravilla Rajavarna Resort earned global recognition as the best lakeside resort alongside best presidential suite and luxury family resort. Adding to the success, Hilton Yala Resort, the latest addition to Hilton Sri Lanka's portfolio, was acknowledged for best interior design and secured wins in the categories of Luxury New Resort and Luxury Wildlife Resort. AIA Insurance is thrilled to announce its platinum sponsorship in the WCIC Pratibha Abhishek Women Entrepreneur Awards 2024 for the second consecutive year. This Pratibha Abhishek Award celebrates the remarkable achievements of women entrepreneurs and aim to inspire the next generation of female leaders. As a part of AIA's commitment, the company has taken the opportunity to engage personally with the last year's award winners. Through shared stories and invaluable advice, these trailblazers have inspired countless aspiring young women, reinforcing AIA's dedication and fostering female empowerment and mentorship. AIA's commitment to women's empowerment extends beyond this sponsorship. As they look forward to this year's award ceremony, AIA remains dedicated to championing the voices of women entrepreneurs and fostering a culture of innovation, resilience and leadership. PMF Finance PLC announced the appointment of Professor Ajit Mendis as the new Chief Executive Officer effective immediately. Mendis brings over 30 years of experience in the banking and financial services industry coupled with an impressive academic and professional background that will undoubtedly contribute to the company's growth and strategic dedication. He has served as a director at Allianz Finance PLC and as a board member for several non-financial sector firms. Further, he has contributed to the uplift of over 20 MBSL sector firms by way of consulting and coaching. Let's take a short commercial break. Global updates coming right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks declined today as rising US Treasury yields put pressure on technology shares compounded by weak economic data from several regional economies that dampened the market sentiment. Regional markets struggled to find momentum following a large performance on Wall Street where major technology stocks faced significant handwinds due to the high yields and increased risk aversion among investors seeking to lock in recent profits. 
Concerns over a tightly contested presidential race and a slower than expected pace of interest rate cuts have weighed heavily on Wall Street in recent sessions, contributing to the cautious outlook. Tech-heavy indices were the worst performers in Asia, reflecting the overnight losses seen in the US. South Korea's Kospi slipped 0.2%, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index experienced a 0.7% decline. Wall Street's closed lower as climbing treasury yields pressured mega cap stocks and investors grew less confident about future rate cuts from the Federal Reserve. U.S. stocks ended lower on Wednesday, with mega cap stocks dragging down the main indexes as investors grew less confident about future rate cuts from the Federal Reserve. The Dow and S&P 500 both finished almost a percent lower, while the Nasdaq lost more than a percent and a half. Shares of McDonald's fell 5 percent after the CDC said an E. coli outbreak linked to the fast food restaurant's quarter pounder hamburgers killed one and sickened many. Shares of Starbucks rose despite the coffee giant suspending its forecast amid falling demand for its pricey drinks. Shares of another consumer company Coca-Cola fell 2 percent after it said business in China and the Middle East was weakening. Among the rate-sensitive mega-cap stocks, NVIDIA, Apple, Amazon and Meta platforms all lost more than 2 percent. The decline comes as 10-year Treasury yields reach a three-month high, with investors reassessing the Fed rate cut outlook over the next few months against the backdrop of strong economic data and the upcoming presidential election. Coca-Cola is aiming to hit the higher end of its organic sales forecast for this year as growing demand for its sodas and juices in it helped it post a surprise third quarter sales. Coca-Cola is aiming to hit the top end of its 2024 organic sales forecast. That's after it posted a surprise rise in the third quarter sales on Wednesday, helped by a growing demand for its sodas and juices in the United States. But shares in the Sprite maker did dip mid-morning after its CEO, James Quincy, flagged a decline in volumes in China and the Middle East. For China, demand has taken a hit due to a slow economic recovery following the pandemic, caused largely by a protracted property crisis. For the Middle East, the conflict has impacted supply. Revenue also dropped in Europe, Africa and the Asia-Pacific region. But North America revenue jumped 12%. After the company's offer of 12-ounce slim cans to attract customers with tight budgets drove demand. Analysts branded this move, quote, fancy footwork to persuade drinkers to keep shelling out for premium-priced products. The drinks company expects annual organic sales to grow about 10%. Its comparable net revenue in Q3 rose 0.3% to $11.95 billion, while analysts expected a drop of more than 2.5%. Well, that's all of us from the Nightly Business Report for today. We will see you again tomorrow with the latest updates in the business globe. Until then, I'm Vinod Thank you for watching. Have a good night.